Hello and uh, welcome to my first video for 2023. Uh, so we're going to be talking about paper clay. What is it and can I make my own? So uh, paper clay, the kind of paper clay that I use, doesn't have any clay in it, nor is it air drying clay, although it does dry in the air. So its main ingredient is paper. Uh, to which you add glue and various other fillers. And if this is beginning to sound a lot like papier-mâché, well, you're right, they are kissing cousins. Um, so you can buy paper clay commercially and it's used by sculptors and doll makers in Europe and America and Japan. Um, there are two main brands, which are these two, which are beautiful to work with. They're lovely and smooth um, and they give great results. The downside is that this is the largest size pack that you can purchase and they are really quite expensive. So if you want to make um, a large and ambitious sculpture, something more than about a 12 inch figure, um, you're going to be spending quite a lot of money. So one solution is to make your own and it's very easy. All the ingredients are non-toxic. They're really easily available. Um, um, I'm speaking to you from the UK, so I'm going to be used terms that um, we're familiar with in the UK. If um, anything's not familiar to you, you can always email me and uh, we can we'll find out what the equivalent is in your country. Anyway, I'm going to show you how I make my paper clay. Um, there are loads of recipes on the internet, but this is one that I have found through trial and error is, is fairly reliable. So your first and main ingredient is paper pulp. Now, you can actually buy the paper pulp um, already um, milled and dried and processed for you, which is brilliant because if you've ever made um, your own um, papier-mâché or handmade paper, it's quite a tedious process. But you can, you can start from scratch with shredded newspaper or shredded toilet paper and um, you, you wet it, you leave it to soak for a couple of days uh, and then you strain it off and, um, and that's your, your paper pulp, but it can be a bit lumpy. You'll end up with something that looks like this. This has been made from shredded toilet paper and that's going to need to be ground in a, in a coffee grinder or something really to get some of the lumps out. If you don't want to do that tedious process, you can actually buy the paper pulp already processed for you. And I've got some here. Now I'm going to put my mask on for this. Any time that you're working with dry or dusty ingredients, you really want to pop a mask on. So this is made from recycled newspaper. Okay, so I'm going to put my gloves on. I'll be giving you rough measurements um, for quantities of things, but um, you don't have to be too precise, I'm not. This is a bit like using your grandmother's favorite cake recipe. Uh, by the time you've, you've made it a few times, uh, you don't really have to measure things. So these are just rough proportions and you want, you'll want to play about yourself to uh, get a consistency that, uh, that you like. But basically you want about three handfuls of your paper pulp. And you want to wet it, wet it, not soak it. So you just want to make sure that everything's covered but you don't want this swimming in water, otherwise it's going to be really sloppy. So I'm just put a little bit of water in there, as you can see, I'm just mixing that to make sure it's soaked in to all the paper pulp. Then you're going to want to add some PVA glue. Now the glue I've got here is clear, but you can use the white PVA, either works fine. I use a dessert spoon, 
um, as, a, as a rough measure and I'm going to put three dessert spoons into my mixture Quite a little bit of baby oil. This is just a mineral oil. Just a little bit of a squirt there. Stir that in. Okay, so the next ingredients are calcium carbonate and French chalk, which is also known as talcum powder. So calcium carbonate, uh, you can buy it in smaller and large quantities. It's easily available. It's, it's very cheap. Again, I'm going to add three generous tablespoons of that. It's slightly coarser than the French chalk which is why I add it, because if you, if you want a smoother recipe, uh, you want a nice smooth filler. So. About a tablespoon of the French chalk in there. So it's beginning to look a bit like a bread mix which is quite apt because that really is the sort of consistency that you're, you want to get. And all you do is knead the ingredients together. If your mixture is a bit too stiff, <clears throat> add a little bit more of the baby oil. Okay, I'm just squeezing and kneading. So as I say, all the ingredients are non-toxic, but do be careful. If you know that you're allergic to any one of these ingredients, then please do find an alternative. I know some people do. Uh, there are rare instances of people having an allergy to um, PVA glue, for instance, in which case you can add um, uh, starch glue or another organic-based glue. Um, the reason that I don't do that is I don't use anything that um, is a derivative of flour because there are so many people who have uh, gluten allergies and this does not contain any flour at all. And there you are. And you'll know when it's, when it's thoroughly mixed because you'll be able to squeeze it into a shape and it will hold its own weight. And that is your basic paper clay. Once you've got your paper clay, wrap some cling film around it and pop it in an airtight container, such as an old ice cream tub. If you want a smoother mixture, you can either add more of the talcum powder, the French chalk, or you can mix it with some of the commercial paper clay. Now you might want to experiment with different proportions. I like to um, have one part of the commercial paper clay to two parts of my own clay. For most of my um, sculpting needs, that seems to work. Uh, for a final layer, if, or if I'm adding a lot of detail, then I will just use the commercial clay. So your basic clay will look like this. As you can see, that's quite fibrous. If you want a smoother mixture than that, uh, you can try adding things like uh, plaster fillers, uh, polyfiller for example, um, cheaper ones are available. Um, again, if you have any allergies or know that uh, you, these things might cause you a problem, don't try this. Uh, but um, if you want to have a go, this is one that um, I added a cheap filler that I got from uh, Poundland, I believe. Uh, and as you can see, that's a lot smoother. Now I would probably use that for 
I could make a, a complete piece really apart from the final layer out of a mixture like that. If you want it really smooth you're going to have to use the commercial clay or as I said you can use a mixture of uh, one part commercial paper clay to two parts of your own clay and you'll get something like that which again is smoother smoother still and um, that probably is a good enough consistency to use for uh, for everything really uh, so I hope you found this interesting and informative um, do have a go it's as you can see it's incredibly easy to make your own paper clay um, the recipe will be on my website um, if you have any questions just email me um, I will be running some workshops throughout the year so um, keep your eye on my website where I'll put up all the dates and on my Facebook page uh, but in the meantime I hope you have fun and get creative and uh, see you soon